So you want to study a book of the Bible, but you don't quite know where to start or what to do after you start. In today's video, I'm going to walk you step by step through the process that I have taught to thousands of people over the last 25 years. Now, in case you and I haven't met yet, I'm Keith Farron, your Bible coach. My passion is helping you move from should to want when it comes to reading, studying, understanding, applying, and enjoying God's Word. So, if that sounds good to you, you're going to want to click that little button down there so you don't miss a video. Well, I've been spending almost 30 years now teaching people how to read and study the Bible, and the question I get asked so often is, how do I study a book of the Bible so that I understand the context, I understand what it's teaching, I'm applying it, and I can remember it longer than a week after I'm done studying? Well, since I've been asked this question so many times, I thought I would put it right here in the Bible Study for Beginners series here on this YouTube channel. And since it's part of the series, I want to make sure that you have my free guide, The Simplest Way to Study any Bible passage. So whether you're studying a book or a chapter or a parable or a psalm, you can use this guide as my gift to you to study that passage. Well, I am passionate about helping people study the Bible book by book. In fact, one of the chapters in this book, How to Enjoy Reading Your Bible, my best-selling book, is devoted to what I call a 60-day adventure taking two months to study a short book of the Bible. I did a deep dive on it, on the process I'm going to teach you in the next kind of five to ten minutes. I've done a deep dive on that in Falling in Love with God's Word and all of the books in the Scripture Journey series, Hebrews, Second Timothy, Colossians, Ephesians, all of those books are built on the principle that I'm about to teach you. So the links to those books, those resources, and descriptions of those you'll find below. But it all boils down to a very simple analogy. The analogy of building a house. When you build a house, there is an order in which things happen, right? I'm guessing that you want paint on your walls, you want trim, but that's not where you start. You start with a foundation. So I'd like you to think of studying a book of the Bible like building a house. There's foundation, then there's framing, then there's finish work. Foundation, framing, finish work. All three steps are incredibly important and the order in which you do them is very, very important if you want the house to be solid, if you want the house to last, and if you want to remember and understand what is written in a book of the Bible, then I think using this analogy, using this approach of foundation first, then framing, then finish work is so vitally important. Because our God has wired our brains to naturally and enjoyably learn anything, including the Bible, from the general to the specific. But one of the main reasons why people struggle to understand and remember what they read in the Bible is because we've actually flipped that 180 degrees around and we say, okay, oh, let's dive into studying the book of Ephesians. And so let's look at the first few verses. Well, we're looking at the details. It's like doing the finish work on a house before you've laid the foundation. Well, I'm going to paint this wall and then we'll kind of see what the house looks like. That doesn't make any sense. Or you're not going to watch a movie scene by scene by scene, pausing it and discussing. No, you're going to watch the movie. Then you're going to study the scenes. Everything, whether it's movies or building a house or sports, right? You, I love sports, but I kind of want to know how, what the basic rules of a sport are before I start talking about individual defensive strategy. Everything in life we learn from the general to the specific, and that's what this process is built on. And that's where foundation comes from. When I talk about going on a 60-day adventure, the first 30 days, so this is specifically about studying a short book of the Bible. I really recommend that people start with a short book that is manageable, something you can read in 20 minutes, maybe 30, something like Ephesians or 2 Timothy or Philippians or James, something short and manageable. And after you've done that with a few books, then you'll kind of know how to adapt it for studying a longer book like Genesis or one of the Gospels or Acts or Hebrews or something like that. But when we're looking at a short book of the Bible, 
then I look at the first 30 days as really the foundation and framing. And then the last 30 days of the 60 day adventure as the finish work, the verse by verse, the deeper study of scripture. And so let's look at these one phase at a time. The first phase is the foundation phase. Foundation phase, you're just getting the overview. You're, to use the analogy I mentioned earlier, you're watching the movie. And for this foundation phase, I recommend taking 30 days. And for at least the first 20 to 25 of those days, just read it. Read the whole book. Read, take, if you're taking one of these short books, then you're only talking about a 15 to 20 minute commitment. It might be four chapters like Philippians or 2 Timothy, or it might be six chapters like Ephesians or Galatians. But either way, you're talking about somewhere between 15, 22, 23 minutes. It's just not very long. And that's gonna give you this picture, this overview. When you read bigger portions, just like with the foundation of a house, you see, you don't see what every individual room is gonna be and all the details and what color this is gonna be and what color that's gonna be and where the sink's gonna, no, you see the shape of it. You see the outline of it. You see how much square footage is gonna be covered of your property. And when you're reading a book of the Bible and you're just saying, read it for 20 times in 20 days or 30 times in 30 days, and you're going to just naturally understand it better. You're going to see connections. You're going to see themes. You're just going to notice it. You're going to understand the feel and the flow and the tone of the letter because as much as we frequently read the Bible and it kind of sounds the same in our head, when we read bigger portions of it, it doesn't. I did a whole video on why you're going to want to read at least 10 minutes to put our brain in that natural storytelling mode where we see the characters and hear their voices. It happens very naturally. It just doesn't happen naturally if we're reading for two to five minutes, which is about how long it takes to read a chapter of the Bible. And so that foundation phase, you're reading again 20 times in 20 days, 30 times in 30 days, and you're looking for big picture, understanding what the whole thing is about. What are some of these themes? And maybe every, I'd say four to five days, pick up a different translation. If your kind of go-to translation is the Christian Standard Bible, the CSB, like mine is, then you might pick up the NIV after five days. And on day 10, you might read the New Living Translation. And on day 15, you might read the English Standard Version or one of the paraphrases, like the message, and just to, to get some new insight. But primarily, you're reading your go-to translation. That will also help you remember it. You'll have huge, after 20 or 30 times, you'll have huge portions of it down word for word without ever trying. This foundation phase, while on the surface it sounds really repetitive, I'm gonna read the Bible 30, this one book, 20 times in 20 days, or 30 times in 30 days, it actually becomes more fun as you start to understand it better and as you're carrying it with you and as you're thinking about it throughout the day. So this foundation phase is a, a fantastic phase for getting that, that overview, that big picture story. And I also, not only would I kind of spice in by putting in a few different translations, but every five to seven days, I would do a simple background study which I'll do a whole a different video on how to do background studies and I'll share my screen and walk you through some of my favorite free tools for that. But the bottom line is you kind of want to know who the author was, who the audience was, and what the atmosphere was. Talk about those three, kind of who wrote the book, to whom was it written, who was receiving it, and what was going on for each of them, what was going on in the culture. That context can make the study of a book of the Bible really, really enjoyable. So the first phase is foundation. The second phase is the framing phase. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen a house getting built in your neighborhood, but I'm always blown away at how fast the framing goes, right? It seems to take forever for them to clear land and get the foundation built. And once the framing's done, it can take forever to get all the detail work and paint and plumbing and electrical and all that. But the framing, it just seems to happen in a snap. Well, the framing phase of Bible study is the fastest phase as well, but don't skip it. It's really helpful for the way that God's wired our brains. Of the, It's the bridge from the general overview foundational study to the detailed kind of verse by verse, paragraph by paragraph study of finished work. 
The framing phase is really simple. It is basically taking a chapter at a time and looking at where are the natural breaks. Just like the framing of a house, it's not the finished product and it's not the starting point. It just blocks out where the kitchen's gonna be, where the bedroom's gonna be, where a closet's gonna be, where a bathroom's gonna be. And the framing kind of gives you these bite-sized chunks that you can then handle and dive into. Well, the framing phase breaks these big picture uh, content that we've done in the foundation phase into these what I call day-sized chunks that we will look at individually in the finished work phase. So you can do that by uh, just writing a, a little one or two sentence summary of each with little references to where those natural breaks are. You could do it if you like to outline and just kind of shorthand everything, then you could do it in an outline. There are lots of ways that you can that you can organize it, but you're basically just wanting to look at, as you read through a chapter at a time, breaking that down into what is a section small enough that I'd like to look at it for a day at a time in the next phase. So that's the framing phase. The final phase is the finish work phase. It's the phase that a lot of people start with. They dive right in and try to dive deep into application and understanding and reading commentaries and your study Bible notes and all of this research. Well, I like to think of this finish work phase kind of like that discussing the scene of a movie that you've already watched and you love. And if you look at, if you watch the scene of a movie that you've never seen, then you can kind of analyze it and look at the lighting and the cinematography or maybe what's happening between two characters, but it's nowhere near as fun and rich as if you've seen the movie a few times and you already love the movie and then you're discussing that one scene or that one character, then that deeper discussion, that detailed conversation is actually fun. And I find that when we do the finish work phase first, it's really academic. It's really heady. It can really be, dare I say, boring for a lot of people. But if you have laid the foundation and you've done the framing, then when you dive into the finish work of looking at one verse, two verses, one parable, one story, one event, man, that can be some really, really rich study. And again, there are so many different ways to do that. You can go, if you have a study Bible, you can look at the notes to that. If you have a commentary that you like to look at, there are lots of Bible study websites, most of which are free and amazing. I'll link to some of those below in the description. Uh, there are, you could have discussions with friends about that and get together with other people who are studying it to see kind of what they're seeing. But this deeper study, when you're looking at, so what, what, what does this say? What does it say to the people in that culture? Because again, you've already done the foundation of the author, the audience, and the atmosphere. So what did it say in that time? And how does this apply to my life today? How does this apply to the community of faith that I belong to? There's so many different questions that we can ask. And, and sometimes people only ask the question, how does this apply? And while that's a good question, I like to flip that just a little bit and say, what is my response? Because sometimes your response is an application. Sometimes your response is to worship. Sometimes your response is just to enjoy the story that you've read. So not every single verse of every single paragraph is gonna have some life-changing application point. Many will, but sometimes we just read and we enjoy the read and we are called, we're just, it just calls us into a time of worshiping God. So sometimes I think that what is my response is maybe a better question to ask than just what is my application. This concept of finish work, you can dive as deep as you want. Some people will spend days on just a paragraph and some will take a paragraph and look at it for a day and then the next day move through the next one. Uh, but, but if you take a month and you look at the foundation and the framing and then you take another month let's say and you look at the finished work and by the time you get to the end of that you're going to have a really really rich understanding of God's Word. So there you have my plan for a 60-day adventure. It starts with foundation and then there's framing and then there's finished work. 
I hope that that analogy of building a house as a way to study the Bible has been helpful for you. Feel free to use this to show somebody else how to study a book of the Bible. And of course, if this has been helpful, then please like this video, subscribe to this channel, leave a comment below saying kind of what was your aha moment of this and even what book of the Bible you're going to study. And for sure, please share this with a friend. Helps other people learn how to study a book of the Bible. Have a great day, and I will see you in the next video.